Good morning you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to talk about a differing cream. Um, I thought I would do this video because in the United States you can now buy this over the counter. Um, I thought it may be useful to us in the UK because if something's available over the counter it may be that we can order it online and I will try and see if I can find anything and link it for us if there is such a thing. It may be too soon because it's only um, been available over the counter since January this year. Um, so. <clears throat> As you can see, I have, see two. I have two, and that's because I am prescribed these, and I have been using these for three years. In fact, both of these expire at the end of this month, and so I'm going to the GP on Thursday, and I'm going to ask for some more of the cream. Um, so I haven't used them for aging, so this video will be a lot quicker than any other video. Um, well, saying that, in, in the other videos, I hadn't actually tested them out and showed you the results, but I, I very briefly tried these kind of around my eye area but didn't I haven't really used them for any length of time and I'll talk you through why but I'll tell you about the research that there is on these how they compare with um, tretinoin retin-a and what the research is on aging that kind of thing and tell you what I think and my experiences with these. So what is different? Different is the trade name for adapalene so the ingredient to these is adapalene and adapalene is a third generation retinoid um, that simply means that it is um, it was discovered later than the others um, so I think Tretinoin was approved for the use in acne in 1962. Adapalene was approved in 1984, so 20 some years later. Um, so there's less known about an ingredient when it's 20 years apart like that, and it hasn't been researched to the extent that Tretinoin has, um, specifically for aging. It has been researched for um, acne. It comes in a gel, a 0.1% gel, a 0.1% cream, and a 0.3% gel. So two gels, 0.1%, 0.3% and one cream in 0.1%. Um, you can only, however, buy the 0.1% gel over the counter in the US. For us in the UK, we can be prescribed the 0.1% gel or cream. I don't know if we can be prescribed the 0.3% gel. Um, I'm not going to ask for it because I'm happy using the cream and I'll explain that when I talk about my experiences. So what does the research say? The research is really interesting and when I first started looking at it, the first study I came across said that adapalene was better um, versus tretinoin. The second one said tretinoin was better. Um, however, I've looked at some really high level studies um, and the collective results. So three different clinical trials that were done on a large group. Um, and the outcome was that adapalene is as effective as tretinoin 0.025%. So you may be tempted to jump to the conclusion that although this is equal to 0.025% of tretinoin, that the tretinoin you're using, the retin-A at 0.05% or 0.1% is better than this, but it's not necessarily so. There have been some studies showing that actually tretinoin or retin-A has better results at lower levels um, for many complex reasons, and it doesn't give an exact amount, there is no conclusive research on that side of things, but it, it doesn't necessarily mean that our higher strength tretinoin is better than differing. So retinoids were first used for acne, um, and tretinoin, as you know, was discovered to be effective on wrinkles, and so has been used more over the years for that as well as for acne. For adapalene, there hasn't, hasn't been much research for aging, and it is over-the-counter available to people for acne. Obviously, they are not going to interview you when you buy it, um, which means that you can use it for aging, um, but it isn't, that's not what its purpose is. It is for acne, and it has been proven to work. And that's the research on adapalene versus tretinoin for acne, and I think there's still more research needed even in that area because there are things um, like adapalene is less absorbed, less easily absorbed into the skin, but it seems to um, target the areas required more than tretinoin. There's a few things they still need to, con to continue researching, but what is the research for aging? There isn't very much research at all, actually. Um, there's only one study in Chile that I can find um, that has really good results, but is not a double-blind study. It's not a clinical trial. This is a product that I would expect to have good clinical results from a trial. I would expect it to have good results for aging. Um, it could be that it comes out to be less effective or more irritating or maybe works on a 
fine lines instead of deep wrinkles or wrinkles instead of fine lines. I, that's what the research could show, but I would expect to see that it had good results for aging because it has the same mechanism as um, a retinoid or as tretinoin, and it is a retinoid. So it's retinoids are already proven to be, have an anti-aging mechanism. There is already some long-term safety data on this, um, but again, that was for looking at acne, but that means that there is a safety profile, a good safety profile, so I have no issues with that whatsoever. Um, just a point on that though, um, where, where I review ingredients like this or products like this, and I talk about it being a novel or new product with no long-term safety data, um, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't use it. I think somebody was confused in one of my videos because I had said, now what video was it? The advanced 2% retinoid, I think, um, where I said there's no research on the safety profile of it. Um, and that's true. And it's just something that I think that people should know, but that is not unusual. When a new product is created, um, you don't have to have gone through all the four or five stages of research before you start to put it out to the public. Um, some of those stages are whilst the public are using it, you report back side effects and that's how things are further discovered um, as long as it's not found to be harmful or life-threatening in the first stages, um, that is normal practice. So I, like everybody else, have to make a decision as to whether to take the risk. So I am a bit of a risk taker in that respect, but I know there'll be some of you watching that have extremely sensitive skin or are less of a risk taker than me, and you want to only use products that are proven and have a good safety profile. Um, so I just think it's, it's important to let you know the whole to give you the whole picture. Something interesting from the research um, for aging is that differin, which is the adapalene, let me call it differin, is adapalene, retin-A is tretinoin. So differin is less irritating than retin-A um, and also works faster. So the differin will work faster than the retin-A in doing what you want it to do basically. So let me tell you about my experience with these, these two formulas and then I'll give you my kind of conclusion if you like. Um, this is the first one I got and I got this on in May 2014. This is the 0.1% gel. So this is the one that is sold over the counter. Um, I got it because I had acne all over my chin and I've still got some sort of scars and um, tiny little white bumps and whatnot that I'd love to get rid of and I'm working on it. Um, but this is what I was prescribed. So I started to use it and it's once daily you apply it on prescription but also when you buy it over the counter they recommend to apply it once daily and I started doing that but I did start to get very itchy dry skin um, it, it was peeling a little bit as well so I wasn't I didn't know at the time I don't think I even perhaps knew about the whole retin-a for wrinkles I didn't really think about you know using it less to see if that helped the doctor certainly didn't tell me that he just said put it on once a day and that was it um, and so I went back to the doctor in December and, uh, and told him the problems I was having and he gave me this, which is the 0.1% cream. Um, this is the one I've used ever since. I'm not even sure why I kept this. I think I kept this and this because I knew that it was a retinoid and I knew that I might want to use retinoids at some point for anti-aging. Um, but it, uh, there were so many other things over the last... The last year I've got an interest in retinoids for my skin, but before that there were so many other things I was interested in, it wasn't my priority. So I started to use the cream and I was very happy with that. I didn't have any redness, any peeling. It may have been because I'd already gone through what's called retinization, as in I'd gone through that period of dryness and peeling with this, um, but it was never that severe with this. Um, and so with this, it was absolutely fine. I would say probably about three to four months after using this, my acne cleared up. However, I was also seeing a gynecologist at the time for my polycystic ovary, which is a hormone imbalance, and I was given a new drug, which I'm still on now, which has balanced out my hormones. And it's something that I can tell works because my skin isn't as oily, my hair isn't as oily, I don't feel as tired. There's, there's many, many things that that helped. So I don't know whether it was this or the medication or a combination of both, but I stopped using this for my chin and my chin stayed clear and I have the occasional breakout, but nothing like I had very cystic acne, very painful cystic acne. So if you're thinking of giving it a go for um, acne, I would definitely recommend this. Um, I know that a lot of us will be looking at this for anti-aging, but I would definitely recommend this for acne if you have that um, and you can get it on prescription in the UK. So for aging, like I say, I didn't really consider putting retinoids into my skin 
consistently. I would occasionally use this and put a bit around my eyes and then I'd forget. I didn't, wasn't really making up a skincare regime until it's been the last year I've been really more interested in in what I put on my skin. Um, and so I think, like I said, that's why I kept these two, knowing that I might put it into my regime at some point, but I had, um, I've had, i had retinol products. I've also had Retin-A that I got from, I can't remember, somewhere on the internet. And I wanted to try those instead of these. So that's why I can't really give you much, I can't give you any information on how these work on anti-aging because I would have needed to have used them concentrated for a few months, taken before and after pictures, etc., etc. If I can get a new prescription of this um, on Thursday this week, whoops, um, then I am going to use this after my advanced retinoid 2% runs out. So I wanted to do a comparison for you um, or to tell you which one I think is better. And obviously from that, I think this one is better. Now, it's the cream that I'm using. That's the only thing to remember. I'm using the cream. But even with the gel, having since used Retin-A, I would say that this is half as irritating as the Retin-A, maybe even less than that, but the Retin-A is definitely way more irritating than using Differin. Um, so I would recommend Differin from the point of view of irritation, um, even in the gel, for the cream, a lot less so, but you can't buy the cream over the counter. And from the point of view of efficacy, so how good it is for anti-aging, I would recommend Differin, for you guys in the US, I would recommend buying Differin and using that over and above the advanced 2% retinoid. Simply because, as I said in that video, although it is a retinoid, it's a retinoid ester, I believe that it's probably weak, that it's, it's very weak and would take a lot longer to work and that's why it's not causing so much irritation. Whereas with the um, adapalene, it's, there's the same amount of research, i.e. barely any, um, but retinoids are proven to be anti-aging as opposed to retinoid esters, if that makes sense. So I would choose the Differin over the 2%. Um, so I've bought the 2%, I am gonna use it because it's a lovely it's a lovely thing to use actually. I used it on my neck last night, even though my neck is very red. That is from the retinol. Um, whereas with the 2%, I never get any irritation with it. Um, and I believe that that's not just because of the conditioners in it and the encapsulation of the retinol. I think it's because it's weak. It's a weak ester. The other thing to compare it with, of course, is the 1% retinol. And again, I would actually recommend using this over the 1% retinol. And once again, once my 1% retinol has gone, I will use this, assuming I can get it on prescription this Thursday. It may be that because I haven't had it for three, three years and they can't see any acne on me, they may not give it to me. Um, and actually, I'd quite like to try it and see if it'll take those little white bumps away, you know. Um, so we'll see what they say on Thursday. But if I get it, I will use up my retinol, I think. I'm not sure about that 1% because I basically want to put retinol on my neck and around my eyes. My eyes seem to be much more tolerant of retinol and retinoid products than my neck. Um, so I don't know whether I'll use that up or not. And I will take photos each step of the way. At the moment, I'm using the Azureline around my eyes. And so I've taken a photo, we'll take a photo at one month and another photo at two months. So I won't be using this for another couple of months anyway. Um, I will use the retinol. I'm only using it on my neck, but I'm gonna use up my advanced 2% retinoid. I'm so sorry, I'm talking about so many products here, but I know that people will say, which one would you buy out of these two, you know? But basically this one wins. Differing wins over both the, the retinol 1%, the retinoid 2%, and the tretinoin that some of you are using at 0.5% or even 0.1%, 0.05 or 0.1%. I would still recommend differing. The good thing about this is it doesn't have any alcohol in it, any fragrance in it. I don't think it will do you any harm. Um, the, you know, the worst thing that's going to happen is your skin might be a little bit itchy, a little bit dry, and it may even peel. Um, although it says to use it once daily, I would base that on on what you've used before. If you've been using tretinoin and you're gonna replace it with this, then I think you should be fine using it once nightly. If you've been using your tretinoin, say once every other day, you should be okay using this once nightly or once daily. You can use it in the day as well, as long as you put SPF on. Um, but if you're new to retinoids, then I would say just try it once, leave it two or three days, see what happens, and then maybe use it again. I wouldn't say use it every night when you first get it. Something to think about is although Differin doesn't have much research at all on how it works for anti-aging. Retinoids do, as I said, but Differin has research showing that it works on acne. And within those studies, it's shown to improve skin texture. Um, even skin moisture levels actually is one thing it's shown. Skin texture and uh, porosity. So it can work on pores. It has worked on 
pause. So that's something that I think, if nothing else, you're, you're going to get that benefit from it. You're going to get a better skin texture. You're going to get some help with um, enlarged pores, etc. So I think it's a winner. So as I said, I'll see if I can find it linked for us in the UK, if we can buy it, um, in case you can't get it on prescription. And I'll link it for you guys in the US, of course, as well. Let us know, anybody that's used this, how you found it. Um, I think it's probably too soon to tell how it works on aging. But like I said, I will... I don't know how long I'll do with the Argiraline. Probably, I might even leave it at a month. I might see if there's a difference in a month and then see if there's any more research popped up because the thinking with Argiraline is that it's pretty quick to work on. Well, it should be pretty quick because it should be stopping the micro contractions immediately. Um, so I'll see what I think at a month, but the maximum I'll use it is for two months and see what the results are. At that point, I'll do an Azuraline results video and then I will um, go on to use Differin and see what the results are with this. If not retinol, I, I haven't decided, but I think it's probably going to be Differin. Again, I'll look and see if there's any new research out. So I'd imagine there are lots of studies out there being done at the moment that we just don't know the results of. So much for your amazing positive feedback on my video talking about my work experience etc um, and as always with this video remember that this is just me gathering information and presenting it to you and you know if somebody else gathered this information and presented it, it may sound slightly different so that's the psychology that if any of you have studied basic psychology you'll know that you know a hundred people can witness an accident and have completely different accounts of what happened so um, just please remember that and so watch more than just me and and get get a mix of opinions and then make your decisions from there on. You know, you may end up deciding that you prefer the advanced retinoid. The 2% retinoid would be good for people that that are sensitive to retinoids in general. If you've if you've had huge problems with retinol and retinoid, then um, then differin is probably not going to be any different for you and I would say go with the advanced 2%. So I'm gonna stop talking now. I'll let you know what I've got on my face. I've got on, I've actually got a new foundation on which I'm gonna be interested to watch back and see how it looks because I did this video yesterday, but I just looked terrible. And what I used was what I've used today, which is the Bourjois Healthy Skin. No, no, Bourjois Healthy, it's not even Healthy Balance. It's something, <laughs> it's Bourjois Healthy Something, and it's a new formula, and it's a foundation that I've tried before and didn't like but it's in a completely new bottle and it's a new formula. And so I thought, you know what, I'm gonna try it because it's a drugstore foundation. I'm always trying to find drugstore foundations that I like. So I used it yesterday and I used it with the Becca, you know that new, it's kind of a peachy color powder that you put over the top and it, it is an all over powder. You're supposed to buff it in. So I did that, but I just looked like an oil slick. I looked absolutely terrible. And of course, because I'd used those two products, I couldn't decide, is it the foundation or is it the powder? So today I've used my Bourjois Healthy, whatever it is, <laughs> with my Laura Mercier setting powder as usual. Um, so we'll see what I look like when I watch it back, but so far I think it looks okay. Um, on my eyes, I have got a pigment by Makeup Addiction Cosmetics. It's a pigment called French Manicure, which I do not have. As you can see, I've got tiny stubby nails. I'm trying to get them a bit more healthy and just having a bit of a rest from all the time I've been spending on my nails. Um, on my cheeks, I've got NARS, no, I haven't, it's not NARS, it's the Urban Decay one, it's very similar, but it's the Urban Decay eight hour blush in Rapture. On my lips, I've got the liquid lipstick by Stila in Caramello with a lip gloss on top, which is this, the Clarins one in 01, number 01, it's the Instant Lip Perfector Lip Gloss. Okay, you guys, if you didn't catch my last video, I'll be very brief on this one. I would like to end the videos with telling you one thing that I am proud of this week, this month, or whatever, and I would love it if you would tell me something you are proud of, um, and just so that we can all remind ourselves of the good things going on and of what we've achieved in life. I would like to say I'm proud that I speak to additional languages, as well as English, although I don't even speak English that well, um, but I speak Spanish and I speak French. Spanish much better than French. Um, I had a friend that spoke nothing but French to me and I responded in English and I worked in a hotel that was a French speaking hotel and I lived in Spain and um, 
of course also studied Spanish so that's how I learned those languages and it's something I'm very proud of especially when I've had to put them to use um, I know when I was in Spain and was taken into hospital I had to check myself in and talk about my whole symptoms in Spanish um, and Kev was with me and he was pretty impressed so let me know of one of your achievements that you are proud of um, I think that's everything yes everything thank you very much for watching and I'll speak